Harley-Davidson and motocross? It might sound like mixing peanut butter and pickles, but believe it or not, the iconic American chopper brand dabbled in the dirt bike world for a brief blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment. Harley actually had two shots at motocross glory. The first attempt was more like a whisper in the wind. This handcrafted prototype, lovingly assembled in Milwaukee, never made it past the 65 bike mark. It was like a fleeting dream, a glimpse of what could have been. But in 1978, Harley once again tried their hands on the motocross scene with the MX250. This wasn't some garage tinker project. This was a full-fledged production-ready bike to tear up the trails. Sadly, its reign was short-lived. After just one year, the MX250 disappeared from dealerships, fading into a footnote in Harley's history. Now, you have to remember this was AMF Harley back then, and they just happened to own an Italian motorbike maker called Ermaci. So, naturally, who do you think was roped into building their off-road dream machine? Yep, you guessed it, Ermaci. Back in 1960, Harley-Davidson decided to spread its wings beyond the American heartland. They took a gamble by teaming up with the Italian company called Ermaci. Turns out, Ermaci weren't just motorcycle whizzes, they used to build seaplanes. Meanwhile, Harley itself was in a bit of a rumble. By 1965, they were publicly traded, but competition from Japan's Big Four was starting to bite. Things got tight in 1968, with a big takeover threat looming like a storm cloud. Harley's boss, William, stood firm declaring, This ain't your grandpa's Harley, we're not going down that easy. But behind the scenes, things were brewing. The board whispered, suits in back rooms scribbled on contracts, and by Halloween that year, a surprise announcement had everyone reeling. Harley was teaming up with a giant company called AMF. It was like a knight in shining armor arriving on a scooter, ready to help Harley navigate the financial rough roads. In 1973, Harley-Davidson put their foot on the gas and gobbled up the rest of Ermaci, an Italian motorcycle maker they'd already had half a bite of. Ermaci was all about zippy little bikes for the Italian crowd. Harley-Davidson saw an opportunity and figured, Let's stick our name on these babies and give those Japanese whippersnappers a run for their money. But things didn't exactly go swimmingly. Turns out, slapping a Harley badge on an Italian scooter wasn't the magic trick they'd hoped for. Still, you can spot these Harley Ermakis at classic bike shows even today, like vintage oddities that time forgot. They might not have been Harley's greatest hits, but they sure tell an interesting story. But why make a motocross bike in the first place? Because it was the 1970s, and motocross was hotter than a chili cook-off in Texas. Kids were tearing up dirt tracks on Maikos and Suzuki's, and Harley-Davidson, well, they were kind of stuck in grandpa mode. But something's had to change, because those youngsters were the future, and Harley wanted a piece of that action. It wasn't just about building a fast bike, though. It was about connecting with that younger generation. Race on Sunday, sell on Monday. That was the motto back then. If Harley's MX250 could tear up the tracks, maybe they could tear up the sales charts too. A few lucky journalists back in the day got to test ride the Harley MX250 and their reports weren't exactly glowing. The engine was a real head scratcher. It had this tiny sweet spot where it actually worked, but if you strayed out of there, Things got rough real quick. Low revs? Forget about it, the power just vanished. Even in the mid-range, it was kinda meh. Not what you'd expect from a Harley. Riders basically had to hold the throttle like their life depended on it, which wasn't exactly a comfortable way to spend your afternoon. The suspension, borrowed from a Suzuki, got some thumbs up. But there was this elephant in the room, the weight. This thing was a tank compared to its rivals at least 12 kilos heavier. That extra heft meant the fancy suspension couldn't quite work its magic. As one reviewer put it, it was like putting trail bike shocks on a motor that needed a pro to handle. Not a great combo. 
In the end, the MX250 was a flop. Harley only made a measly 1,000 of them. Sure, the racing team did okay. Rocket Rex and the boys put up a decent fight, especially considering they were newbies. But they didn't exactly set the world on fire either. And without those championship trophies, the dealers weren't exactly lining up to stock MX250s. No wins, no sales, no future. That's pretty much the story of the MX250. One year and then poof, gone like a desert mirage. A shame really. Maybe with more time and TLC, it could have been something special. But hey, hindsight's 2020, right? Ermacci, the Italian aircraft maker, had a bumpy ride. After the failed motorbike venture with Harley, it landed in the hands of the Castiglione brothers Gianfranco and Claudio. These two motorcycle enthusiasts saw something special in Ermacci and decided to give it a new lease on life. They transformed it into Cagiva, a name that was a loving nod to their father Giovanni and their hometown of Varese.